Mushoku Tensei Episode 22, Ruji Becomes an Adult. Do you think this will get Twitter raging? So go ahead and smash that like if you felt something this episode, whether that's love or just awkwardness. And we also just hit 600,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. You got tons more videos coming out before the end of this year. And a special thank you to this week's sponsor, Bangsu. I know you're craving Japanese snacks, so Bangsu has you covered. Each month, Bangsu does give you the chance to try different snacks from all over Japan. I mean, I live in Japan and I keep on discovering either new snacks or new flavors to things I already enjoy. Like, I live in Tokyo and I can't easily get some of this stuff since it's region specific. And right now, Bangsu is perfect for the holiday. It does make this awesome, memorable gift for anyone in your life that does appreciate Japanese snacks and culture. Especially during these times where it hasn't really been easy to travel. On top of that, not only are you giving them something super delicious, but you're also giving them a chance to win free tickets to Japan. So here's the giveaway. One winner will be selected to win a pair of tickets. Anyone subscribed to Bangsu by the end of this year will be automatically entered. So go for it, don't wait too long. I will include a link in my description so you can check out the tournament conditions and other method of entry. Go and fill that Japanese craving. Kicking this off at the Grey Rat Mansion, you got the party scene along with the wine being spilled. All of this is anime original. It seems like you're getting a glimpse into Rudy's mind. What Rudy really wants. Can he have his family, Ghislaine, Rudyard, just being one big old happy family. Which by the way, I just love the anime shot of the three Mushoko goddesses. Ordered by Hai too. It's just a little sad that all three of them are out of reach for Rudy by the end of the episode. Oh, and the enemy even gave you a cameo of your room. That made it in. But seriously, this is really just showcasing Rudy's deepest fear. Being left all alone. Which you should notice goes back to what he did not have in his past life. Other people to support him, other people's love, whether it was his own fault or not. I guess you could see this as the light novel Rudy's brief mention nightmare. For a time update, it has been three days since that whole Dragon God incident. Better put that in the past. You then had anime Rudy's thoughts on the Man God skipped. That on this deep instinctual level, Rudy wanted nothing more to do with the Man God. On the flip side, the Man God did seem to care about Rudyard and, of course, Rudy. So maybe that guy wasn't that bad after all. For anime Eris, unfortunately the anime keeps on skipping this. Notably, ever since Rudy's quote-unquote revival, she has been getting closer to him. They've been like peanut butter and jelly in that carriage, and she sits so close to him. Their thighs are touching. Rudy, you've made it to the next phase. Unfortunately, this led to a Rudy moment skipped, that just the other day, he saw a little bit of skin peeking out. So he reached out with his right hand and stroked it. In response, Eris turned to Mato Red. But now you actually saw a shift in Eris. The wild beast Eris didn't punch his ass out. In the past, Eris would draw away, but now she actually remained close. Rudy, on the other hand, felt like pushing the limits. That he was getting to the point where he just wanted to thrust his hand into her pants next. Yes, you heard that right. I'm not gonna repeat it. Let's quickly switch over to the other teammate, Rudyard. The anime skipped their initial fun talk about the Dragon God. Rudyard went ahead and revealed that this was the first time since Laplace, that he just took one look at the guy and felt he couldn't defeat him. Keep in mind, Rudyard did not know about all the curses restricting the Dragon God's power. He was completely ignorant about the fact he was physically beat down by that guy holding back. Rudy decided best not to tell him. Rudyard went on to mention that he couldn't stand against the elite from the Seven Great Powers, that they were not people but monsters beyond comprehension. Which is totally on point, he got batted like a fly. As for the juicy topic about who is the Man God, aka the Human God, the anime left for you to wander off screen, but Rudy did in fact spill everything about the Man God. Since the displacement incident, Rudy sometimes had a visit from this mysterious person known as a Man God that appeared in his dreams. That he is the reason he advised to help Richard, along with other times he had gotten advice. That sometimes Rudy may have acted suspiciously since he was following that advice. That it seemed the Man God and the Dragon God were enemies. So way to keep it to yourself, buddy, Rudy. As for the topic about Laplace and the curse, anime Ruger did skimp a little bit, that he had never heard about transferring a curse before. But this was Laplace they were talking about, so it's possible that that guy was able to do anything. You even got a little more from Rudyard's knowledge on curses. That they're called curses since there's no way to lift them. In fact, Rudyard had never heard about a curse that affected an entire tribe in the past. And hopefully he caught it. Did the anime make this too subtle? You had Rudyard the big old guy crying. Poor big fella. Next up, let's get into Rudyard practicing disturbed magic. You know, what he saw from the dragon god. Let me go ahead and explain in detail what the anime skipped. 
that just before the mana in his hand would take shape, Rudy would use different mana to disturb and disperse it. It was awesome that it was simple and it didn't cost extra mana, yet it was this incredible technique that this method of magic nullification was similar to that king tier barrier that Rudy got himself stuck in. Rudy thought it was extremely difficult to stop magic in the same way that the dragon god had. But still, even in Rudy's rough state, he could still use this as a weapon to restrain. For a fun enemy change, he did have Rudy changing the stone into fire. Much easier to play on horseback. I'll also mention that Rudy wasn't simply thinking about running away. Rudy was thinking about the next time he would actually fight Orsted. That there should have been some set rules involved with disturbing magic. Perhaps if he followed that, unleashing magic that way, Rudy might be able to actually nullify the Dragon God's disturbed magic. Come on dude, you're getting way ahead of yourself. But I like that. Switching to Eris, you saw the scene of anime Eris lean on Rudy's back, but the anime skipped the next chunk. She asked, Rudy, how come you're so strong? To which Rudy thought it was strange, he's like, you're stronger than I am. Ah, oh, both of them are being humble. But here's the root of the issue, that Eris was worried she was so easily defeated, don't feel bad. Then for Rudy trying to encourage Eris, telling her she could get stronger. For Rudy, it was really a no-brainer, he just didn't want to die the next time. Not to worry, Rudy was going to be working so hard that if they ever got into such a dangerous ass random scenario like that, he would be able to pick up Eris and haul ass out of there. You should notice that Rudy was being realistic about it. He didn't think that they would become the strongest in this world. That bar was way too high. But he wanted to at least get strong enough so they wouldn't be attacked by some weird people. Naturally, he had to top this with the Rudy moment skipped. Rudy pressed his face against Eris's hair and then inhaled. Oh, that is some good stuff. Next up, another time update, one month passed by. You gotta give it to the anime new scene, this lovely trip down memory lane. What I especially loved about this was that it wasn't just a copy and paste from scenes earlier on. Oh, the Theo train. It wasn't just me recalling this, it wasn't at all at the same level, but I just got that vibe of Eren and friends revisiting their hometown after kicking Reiner's ass. You had the anime adding that visit to their home, seeing that random tree where Rudy and Sylvie played. It's so weird seeing the land so destroyed. Minus the monsters, this place could almost look worse than the demon continent. As for Rudyard, was this guy colder in the light novel? As soon as they got there, he was already taking a hike, like your dad going to the liquor store. Rudy was like, can't you stay, buddy, papa, demon dude? Terminator Rudyard was like, unnecessary, you don't need my protection. The enemy then skipped a chunk of their farewells. Much like Rudy has always praised Roxy, he tried to explain that if Ruger wasn't there, they wouldn't have made it this far in three years. While Ruger was like, no, you could have done it. Like, maybe they could have gotten here, but not in three years. Ruger really praised Rudy, that as a magician, he had already attained this kind of perfection. Despite Rudy being super talented, he didn't let it all get to his head. That by itself at his age was something extremely commendable. So yeah, about that topic, Rudy's age. Best not to remind anime only people before a certain upcoming event. This being Rudy being past 40. For something neatly added for the anime, you did have Rudyard thanking Rudy, specifically bringing up the Rudyard figure. Come on, I'm still waiting for this to be announced. Preferably a prize figure. I don't got a lot of money, dude. For a lovely new anime detail, you did have Eris, the sad girl, trying to hold back tears. For another anime cut, you did have the rest of Rudy's line thanking Rudyard cut out. That he didn't lead to lower his head to him. Both of them were equals. If you want to thank me, look me in the eyes. That definitely screams Papa vibes. I really wish the anime didn't skip this, which is both of them squeezing hands, you know, a handshake. Rudy was over the moon that Rudyard had accepted someone like him. Rudy thought of himself as being pathetic. Someone who had failed the entire way. Sheesh, dude. Give yourself a little bit of credit. And then for Eris letting it out, go ahead, cry little lady. I don't know about you, but this was making me choke up watching it. As to where Richard is going, the enemy skipped this part. The big old guy was going to go and search for any remaining from the super tribe on the central continent. Of course, fixing their reputation was top priority, but that partly wouldn't matter if Richard was the only one left. The big old softy also mentioned that if he had any free time, he would be looking for Rudy's mother. In the anime, they did actually keep Rudy bowing. In the light novel, it was like, no, you better not do that or I will slap you silly. Rudy, you do not bow. So goodbye, sayonara, you lovely Naruto extra. Make sure you keep that one punch luck. Next up, time for the fun, awkward family update. First off, Ghislaine. The enemy skipped them asking where Ghislaine was teleported to. I think they did mention this later that it was the same place as the Lord Philip, the conflict zone. 
Let me just mention that Ghislaine does have this whole side story the anime skipped. An anime OVA would be nice for this, just like they're doing for the Eris Goblin Slayer stuff, but I'm really doubting it at this point. Then, for Eris's grandfather. As you seen earlier, the anime took inspiration from the manga and actually showed this to you way earlier. Originally, you should have been in the dark until this episode. Something you should notice is that Rudy's surprising outburst. I'm like, finally, some emotion. Stop speaking so ultra formal, dude. It's so weird. As for why Soros died, that with him passing, he took everyone's ill feelings with him to the grave. This way, some people were able to find relief from the displacement incident. Or at least that's what they were hoping for. For an anime change, oh come on, you had the loud heiress quieted down. When she screamed, even Ghislaine covered her ears. That energetic howl that would rival the beast people. Switching it up, you did have Rudy visiting the bulletins. Something new for the anime is Ghislaine being with Rudy at this time. Originally, Light Novel Rudy couldn't find them. For Rudy H update, this guy would soon be 13, so not even a teenager yet. In the anime, you did see the Sylphie name topic brought up. The anime did skip it, but originally Light Novel Rudy trying to get contact immediately. Unfortunately, Sophie's contact info was not registered. Denied. If you know, you know. Next up, let's get into an anime skip scene between Alphonse, Rudy, and Ghislaine. The meat of the talk involved the politics between Eris and the whole Grey Rat family. You first had Lord James being brought up, aka the current lord in charge after Eris' grandpa. That the dude was very likely to refuse taking Eris into their household. So this guy was a no-go. Next up came the discussion of Paimon Grey Rat, which was mentioned earlier in the light novel and anime. That if Eris was returned home, and she had no place to go, that the guy would be so kind as to accept her. The problem was that this guy was trying to gain favor from the High Minister Darius. Lord Darius had been someone that had gained powers in the past few decades, that fully supported the first prince. He was also responsible for driving the second princess out of the country. And I know, this kind of just feels random, but this is important to another storyline that the anime has completely skipped up until now. I am a little worried to see how they bring this in. For more relevant stuff, this Darius fellow was the one actually responsible for the kidnappers that took Eris. So the main reason that plan went haywire is due to this dude. Going back to Paimon, if Eris were to accept his offer, he would probably find some excuse to offer Eris over to this Darius fellow. So from the butler dude, Alphonse wanted Eris to follow in their family footsteps and take over management of the land. Ghislaine on the other hand just wanted Eris to be happy, that Eris should just forget about this political and family stuff. Rudy, on the other hand, seemed to have the wisest and final words. It didn't matter, Eris would be the one to decide, so there was really no point in discussing it. Likely why the anime cut this, although the family stuff will be important later. So let's get into it. Are you ready to rumble? The controversial time. Let's make Twitter screech. Right off the bat, you have the anime adding this new wine. Can you guess the symbolism? You did see Eris being not so shaken up about her parents and her family being dead. Rudy, on the other hand, thought that he would be a mess in the same scenario. I mean, he didn't even know where his mother was. Logically, Rudy understood that she was very likely dead at this point, but he couldn't accept it. Then, for Eris getting ready to go downtown, she's been prepping for this for a while. That One Piece gown? She got it back at the Miller's capital. As for legality, Eris is now 15, aka an adult in Mushoku Isekai. Light Novel Rudy at this point was already ready to grill downstairs. As he put it, his little friend was already giving this standing ovation. Alright, so let's get Dante, a 40-something with his cousin. I think you may have seen this on a different site, and don't lie now. But seriously, I'm actually glad the anime chose to make this artistic, romantic. I don't think I could even use the word fanservice in this. I was really worried and curious to see how they were going to do this. I had a slight suspicion that we're going to copy Rudy's Papa and Mama going at it every night. And I'm talking about the Blu-ray edition. That is steamier. Another part of me just wonders whether they did it in this manner to avoid or at least lessen the outrage online. I'm really curious, what do you think about this whole event? Do you think it was tasteful? Or did you still get that icky feeling? Or do you just not care? For me, once it was all said and done, I think it just went by too quickly. I didn't feel much for it, good or bad. I will, however, have you notice the red wine cup. Really going deep into that red. Hopefully you caught this obvious symbolism. As for Rudy's thoughts while rubbing body parts together. All I could think about was how I wanted to be with Eris. I didn't say as much, but I think I loved her. I wanted to protect her forever. I didn't care about the circumstances. A different side of Rudy at this point was already thinking about kids. Three kids would be fine, but I'm sure we can make more. 
As for Eris, hitting it, then running away. Let me just quickly mention, you did have the Eris point of view in the anime skipped here. I got a feeling this will be similar to the Paul situation, where the anime will touch on it next episode. Let me just mention for the anime Eris choice, doing the Dante, this felt cold, almost out of obligation. Maybe to yourself, and or Rudy, and definitely let me know how you felt below. Compare this to the light novel where there was a lot more build up to them catching feelings for one another. And I'm not talking about the manga kissing that never happened. Perhaps for some fan service, the manga made them seem closer from what I've seen. While in the anime, it is interesting to notice that they feel more distant due to all the light novel moments skip for them. Alright, next morning, the 40 year old version no more. Did you notice? That sexy time in the tent. Hopefully their fun time wasn't too loud in this depression zone. You know it, the neighborhood now knows they did it. Especially the one doing the walk of shame in the morning. I also don't know if I could say this out loud without YouTube flagging this video, but let's just say Rudy was comparing his recent experience last night to his toys back home. If we have any connoisseurs, feel free to comment. For a skipped anime detail, you did have Rudy's underwear missing. On the flip side, Eris says undies did remain, so he snatched them. For something new for the anime, you do have Rudy crying his balls out. I think this is the first time he's actually gone all out and cried. He was supposed to cry when he met his father, but I think they chose not to do that in the anime. Very likely saving it for this depressing moment. So, did you love this episode? Was it better than last week's episode? I can't believe you only have one more episode left. Do you think they'll announce Mushoku Season 2 next week? Fingers crossed. By the way, quick update for the Richard video since I know I keep on mentioning it. Maybe that thing is cursed since the editor on that ran into some personal issues lately. Which really just means the video right now is in limbo. I am trying to ask around to see if there's any other anime editor available to finish that up. I do apologize for that taking so long. But anyway, go ahead and check out last week's video or one of these other past videos. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so YouTube actually sends you the videos. If you made it this far, say hi down below and I'll see you guys later.